Internet safety. This is one of the biggest topics that comes up if you spend any real time online. You hear people asking about how can we ensure internet safety, especially in our online communities, because I keep seeing these people in these online communities, forums, chat rooms, social networks, these people that are on these platforms that basically are crying out, they need to feel safe, right? They need somebody to make sure that they are safe while doing whatever it is they're doing on that particular platform. And generally speaking, the people that are asking to be made safe, the people that are demanding online safety, these are the people that typically are on these platforms and they are constantly arguing with other people. That, that's almost always the case. It's always the people that are there constantly engaging in arguments or debates with other people. Typically, they're debating politics, especially sometimes religion. Those are kind of the, the hot button kind of topics that typically set people off. And with those, especially politics and religion, anytime you hear an opinion that you disagree with these kinds of people, they typically then cry foul, right? Hey, this person is attacking me. This person that said something that I don't agree with, that person has now attacked me. They have crossed a line. I feel threatened and I demand somebody step in and make me feel safe again. And what these people really want, they're not really after safety necessarily. All they want, they want somebody to step in and silence that other party that disagrees with them on whatever it is that they were arguing about. Again, you typically see this with politics. Any kind of political discussion, you're going to have groups of people arguing with each other, and each side of the argument is going to claim that the other is dangerous, the other is attacking them, the other has stepped over some line that they shouldn't have crossed, and they want somebody to step in and make sure that that other side of the argument just goes away. Make that, make that group of people go away. You've seen this especially with Twitter, which is now X. You know, before Elon took it over, it was mostly a lot of left-leaning, progressive people on Twitter. Uh, it, a lot of people on the right felt threatened on Twitter. But, but then Elon took over and then, you know, it became, well, you know what, we're not going to necessarily persecute all the right-wing speech on Twitter. And then the left felt like they were under attack. They were being threatened in some way. And you've had both sides claim that someone should step in and make sure that they're safe, right? Because the left sees the right as dangerous and the right sees the left as dangerous. And you can even actually have two people from the same political party argue with each other and think each other is dangerous because they don't quite agree. You often see this, especially these days, with left-leaning uh, political arguments because it's kind of seen as being a good thing the more left-wing, the more progressive, the more woke you are these days. So you know, I've seen this many times on political arguments on social networking where two people on the left will get into an argument because one is not as left as the other. And the one that's not as left as the other is now villainized. And that person is seen as dangerous and somebody needs to shut that person up because they're not quite as extreme as I am. It's really a sad state that we live in, this world that we live in. And by world, I'm really talking about the online world because in real life, in the real world, people don't act like this. People only act like this typically online because they have that safety, the, the safety of being behind their monitor and their keyboard, right? Nobody can really touch me when I'm online so I can be a complete and total jack wagon. <laughs> Nobody can do anything about it. But then when other people come at me the same way I go after them, then I'm going to cry foul and I'm going to demand to be made safe. I demand a safe space. Can please somebody help me? How can we ensure my internet safety? Well, this is actually a easy question to answer. How can we all ensure our internet safety? Well, typically on any big online forum, pretty much every online community has a rule where everybody there has to be an adult, essentially, or they have to be of a certain age. Even the big social networking platforms, Facebook and Twitter, right, they know who everyone is. You have to verify who you are and that way they know that you're actually of a certain age to be on that platform. And if you're an adult, 
you take responsibility for your own internet safety. No one else should be responsible for making you feel safe online. If you are on some social networking app, or you're on Discord, or you're in some chat room, whatever it happens to be, and you're interacting with someone, and that person makes you feel unsafe in some way, and you're an adult, what is the adult thing to do? What is the responsible thing to do? How about this? Close that application. Close that web browser, whatever it happens to be. Exit out of the situation. Just leave. But that's not what people want, right? Even though that is actually the answer, that would actually make them feel safe, right? It's just to get yourself out of that situation. Remove yourself from that situation. That's not what they want. They want somebody else to step in and remove the other person. And to me, that is that's kind of a, a childish kind of way of going about this thing. For the most part, you don't really need codes of conduct. You don't need a, a, a ton of moderators. You need some moderation, obviously, to filter out spam. And sometimes there are legitimate people there that are attacking people in a in a such a way as like physically threatening violence against people, things like that. You do need moderators, but it doesn't need to be the way it, it doesn't need to be heavy handed. For the most part, people know how they should treat other people in real life. And you should also treat people online the same way. So again, as adults, if we're all adults in this online community, then at the end of the day, we are each responsible for how we feel online. If we don't feel safe in that community, leave that community. Now, I know that's kind of a flippant answer. That's not the answer anybody wants to hear. DT, that's a wise ass remark, you know, that I'm the one responsible for my safety online. How dare you say such a thing? Well, at the end of the day, it's true, right? I, I, how can we deny that it is ultimately ourselves that are responsible for our safety, not just online, but it, life in general. At the end of the day, we can't depend on anybody else to make us safe. It is all dependent on each and every one of us individually. Now, where this whole thing just has gone completely off the rails is the rise of especially social networking, especially things like Twitter, Facebook, and other places online where people love to argue, right? When I see all of these people on a platform like Twitter, for example, that purposely get into arguments with other people. That's the only reason they're there. That's the only reason they even have an account. They want to get into these political arguments with other people. And then when they get in these political arguments with other people and the other person says something that they, I don't know, offends them in some way, or maybe the other person in their argument gets the better of them. Then we have to claim some kind of victimhood status, right? Like I'm the victim here. Somebody, please come and save me. And I can't help but label these kinds of people as losers, as lowlifes. And I'm not trying to offend anybody, but let's call it what it is. Anybody that purposely gets themselves into a situation, goes to a place where they know it's going to be heated debate, sometimes just nothing but a bunch of arguing among people, and then after they get into that situation later claims to be the victim, that person has, has something wrong with them. These kinds of people, they typically enjoy playing the victim because they're typically, they've been damaged somewhere along the way in life. Maybe they've had some trauma. So they go online, they get into these political or religious debates and then later claim that that person crossed the line because they said something, they called me a name, they did whatever, and now I'm the victim. Please, everybody else, come to my aid. Come rushing to my aid. Feel sympathy for me because that'll make me feel better. Say, oh, poor DT. It's not your fault. It's that other mean person's fault. And, you know, that's somehow going to make me feel better. All these people coming and telling me I'm a wonderful person and it's the other person that's a big bad meanie. These people that have this kind of victimhood mentality, basically, these people have an unconscious need to seek validation from others, right? They're asking help from others, from other people within this community by asking for a safe space, right? Hey, I, I've been victimized here, come help me out. And then if others rush in to help them, then that validates their existence. And when I say that these kinds of people are losers and low lives, I'm not kidding. I think we can all acknowledge that this kind of victim mentality is unhealthy. This is not a trait that successful people in life have. You probably know a lot of people that are really successful in life. Are any of them 
victims or any of them crying out for safety. No, think about all of the successful people that you know out in the world. You know, how did they get there? They didn't get there by asking people to feel sorry for them. Successful people take responsibility. They are accountable for everything that happens in their life, good or bad. And that's the way each and every one of us needs to be. How can we ensure our safety online? Well, be a responsible adult. Peace, guys.